Hi, and welcome to the IntelliTask training video. My name is Mac, and I'm confident that this short tutorial will get you going with our new IntelliTask module from ASA Controls. First, let's talk about IntelliTask and what it's going to do for us. IntelliTask happens to be a group of Tritium Niagara modules uh, created by ASI that are going to allow for us to automatically configure uh, ASI 6100 and 8100 co uh, controllers in a Niagara station. So uh, with this ability, we will also receive a whole bunch of other features such as uh, providing graphics for the controllers, uh, an air balance feature for the 6100 controller, the ability to clone devices uh, on a network, and then the ability to configure our own custom user graphics. There are also a bunch of small features which we'll get into detail a little bit later. So let's discuss how we go about getting started with IntelliTask. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to need a Tritium Niagara platform. Uh, we are currently supporting platforms from 4.6 upwards. The next piece of the puzzle that you're going to need to have on hand are the ASI IntelliTask modules. There are two of them, the Dash RT module and the Dash UX module, and you're going to need to get this from your ASI sales contact. These need to be loaded as usual into the Tritium Niagara modules folder. Um, and uh, if you've worked with other modules, you'll know once you've loaded these, you are going to have to reboot your workbench and your JSE if you're loading these onto a JSE. So um, please make sure this gets done before you get started with the next step, which will be to have a look at the system inside of your station. Before we proceed with putting ASI IntelliTask into the system, just want to emphasize that the purpose of this training is not to uh, demonstrate how Tritium Niagara works. So we're going to assume you're very comfortable with the workbench and how to get around it and go straight to IntelliTask and see how we work with that. Now, uh, IntelliTask is a service, and so it needs to be brought in via the IntelliTask palette. Um, so we're going to go and find the IntelliTask palette, and we're going to open that up, and we're going to see the services right there. So we grab the IntelliTask service, and we drop it into the service folders, and it comes right in. Now you're ready to do ASI configuration. There are properties associated with the IntelliTask service, and we'll get into that a bit later, but right now we're going to move on to the BACnet network and bring in our BACnet devices. This is standard Tritium Niagara Discovery and we're going to discover just a couple of devices that I have on the network right now. Now, it's important to uh, mention that it's quite likely you will have on your network devices that are ASI controllers and devices that are not ASI controllers. And the IntelliTask service will distinguish between them uh, when you bring them in. Um, it, you will be able to have a look at these devices, and if you right-click, on a non-ASI device, you will see that the actions are pretty standard, nothing new there. But if you're looking at an ASI device, then the service will actually recognize that this is an ASI device and provide some ASI actions that we're gonna look at shortly. So with the action you've just seen, uh, we are able to take a single ASI device and configure it with the push of a button. What we're going to do now is do exactly that, and then we're going to have a look at what configuring the single ASI device gives us. For the purpose of this exercise, what we will do is configure the 6100 device that I have here. And if we take a look currently, and we double click on the device, we just get the property sheet as usual. We're going to look at the points list. As we know, it's empty because all we did was just discover the device, bring it in. We didn't bring in the points. Now, at this stage, you could hit discover and you could discover the points and bring them in. We're not going to do it that way. What we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to choose our actions, and we're going to say ASI config graphics. And it's going to ask you to confirm. We hit true, and away we go. And Straight away, you see the points get configured, and on the right-hand side, you see here, Configure Device Success. On that note, 
don't be afraid to go into your application director and have a look at the messages that get generated when you configure these devices. Um, it does give you a, a kind of a progress bar saying exactly what happened and what was found. So if you ever have a problem with your configuration, chances are good you'll be able to see here uh, what went wrong. So worthwhile looking at the application director after a configuration if you are having issues. Now, uh, this current device is a Personality 12 device, uh, VAV. So um, it's going to have the points that we only need for um, Personality 12. And that's what's nice about bringing it in um, with the services because uh, we're using the service. The service actually intelligently goes out to the device, has a look to see what has been configured on that device and we'll only bring in the points that are relevant for that configuration, including the personality. So um, let's have a look at the wire sheet view and this will give you a better idea. Um, you will automatically get a nice neat wire sheet that's been put up for you. Um, you're seeing gaps here because there are points um, that are not being brought in because this personality doesn't need those points. Um, but it's bringing in the relevant points and you can see there's a lot of stuff that's already pre-modeled uh, for you in terms of logic. So you have a good start with the configuration without having to have done anything. Just one click of the button and you're getting all of this data. Um, on top of the data and on top of the wire sheet, you're also getting yourself a nice graphic. All right. So this graphic shows you exactly um, what's configured for personality 12. And as you can see, we've got an intermittent fan going here with a hot water valve and all of the data that's relevant to that. Now, because we have a hot water valve and an intermittent fan, um, we will also get tabs up here that are related to this personality. Um, because it's hot water valve, we have the ability to do the uh, base time step and position step ones here. And, um, that tab would not be there if we didn't have a hot water valve in the personality. Uh, additionally, you can see that um, we have the damper set points here because this is um, a pressure dependent uh, setup. And so we have the uh, um, setup here for exactly that. And we have overrides that are relevant to this. Now, not, not everything gets set up on the configuration of the unit. So if you can look at the wall sensor, for example, um, the limits aren't set up on these, so they're grayed out. So the service automatically goes out, has a look at the points that are available and automatically adjusts bringing in points or not bringing in points as needed. So uh, as long as you have your device configured correctly in the field, the graphics will adjust accordingly as well. So all of this, one push of the button without needing to have to build any of this yourself. Just a quick few things uh, additional about configuration. Um, some features that you get in addition to what we've already discussed. If you right click on the device and go into its um, properties over here, you will find haystack tags attached to the device. So the device gets tagged automatically with haystack tags, as do the points. If you go into the points, you will see the tags here as well. And so without having to do anything, you actually have everything tagged up haystack style, if that is of use to you. Now, in order to get the haystack tags working, of course, you need to ensure that the haystack module is loaded on your system as well. So don't forget to do that. Additionally, um, with some of the points uh, like zone temperature, uh, you're going to get a history that you can use as well as an alarm extension for um, alarming high and low zone temperatures. In the wire sheet, we have, just doing it over here, um, we have some logic as well that would be useful to you. So the alarming is down here, as you can see. Uh, we've got the cooling set points and uh, heating set points generating the high and low alarm limits. At the top, we have the ability to attach a schedule. There's a default schedule in there, but if you want to use a remote schedule, you can tie in at the binary level using this proxy over here, or alternatively, you can do an enumeration and tie in at this level as well. So you have options in terms of how you schedule this device, and it's all there for you to uh, 
pick and choose as you need and then uh, modify as you need as well. Now, um, status DMUX um, is the ability to basically set up the points so that you can check to see whether the unit is online and offline. Um, I've already set this one up, but basically you would just link the device's status into here and then it will give you uh, the status of whether the unit is online or offline communicating. So uh, that could be useful in certain applications as well if you want to report device status. Now, um, additional to that, we have a few other things in terms of uh, checking modes, bring it into enumeration because what we get from the unit is all analog. So we turn those into enumerated modes. So that's more useful to you. And um, we have this tiny piece of logic at the bottom, which will help us control our tabs. If you do modify anything in these wire sheets, do not delete this piece of logic over here, the tab display and the tab enable. It is required for the uh, PX graphics to work. All right, and then one more thing that we should mention, and you may have seen this when we did the action, you have the ability to reset a device um, using the action menu as well. So you can actually reset a device remotely if that's required. So that's pretty neat. We can go and look at the AX Acer 8100. This has been brought in. You can have a look and see it's got similar graphics. It's got similar tabs. The concept's the same, but obviously the details are different and it has got wire sheets as well. Again, concepts the same, details different. So uh, that's it, that's single configuration in a nutshell.